Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. For today's video, I thought we would do this cute little bunny in watercolors. If you're just here for the tutorial, I will put the time on the screen, but I'm just gonna run through my uh, products here real quickly that we're gonna be using, our supplies. Everything will be listed down in the description below. I will have the reference photo as well as the line drawing down there for you. But today I'm using the Academy Cold Pressed 100% Cotton Watercolor Block. I'll be using my M. Graham paints. I have two jars of water here, one for dirty water, one for clean water. And I've got two brushes that I'm gonna use for the background. So I have my number 12 and my number eight silver black velvet brushes. And I think we're just gonna get right into it. So I'm just gonna start by getting some clean water and putting two dabs of water on my palette here. Because when we're doing wet and wet for the background, I like to mix my paint first and get that ready. So I'm gonna take my number eight and I'm thinking a nice blue around our bunny for like a hint of a sky in the background. And then towards the bottom part of him, we're gonna put some greens to hint some grass. And then when we're done, we can go in and actually add some grass down there. But I think I'm gonna go with the phalo blue for our sky color. And I don't want too much color in there because I want it to, to blend out and really to fade out nicely. So I'm gonna start, start like lighter and uh, if we need to add some color, that's fine. And for our green, I'm gonna go in with my sap green. And again, I'm gonna start a little bit lighter. And I'm also gonna add just a hint of the uh, phalo green in there too. So those will be our two greens, or our blue and our green that we're gonna use. Now, the trick for a nice wet on wet background is you really need to take the time to wet your paper. And before I do that, I'm just gonna take my kneaded eraser here and just lighten the sketch on the outside of our bunny rabbit here. Now I don't wanna lighten it so much that I can't see my lines and I'm not sure where you know, to paint, but I wanna lighten it enough that uh, it won't be as noticeable. And if a little bit shows through, that's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna take my number 12 brush here and the trick to a nice wet on wet background is you need to wet your paper quite a bit. So I'm gonna go and wet it maybe two, three times. It's gonna take probably a good five minutes to wet it. And I'm gonna go around the bunny here and I'm gonna take my time to make sure I'm, you know, really getting in. You can take your time to make some little hairs like this, but I'm not gonna bother because we can go over top after and make some hairs but I'm really gonna take my time, wet it a few times, and it's gonna make a big difference with laying the paint down. Now I may end up speeding up this process a little bit because you really don't need to see me wet this background for, you know, five minutes or so, but uh, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take my time, go around him. And if you don't want to take your time going over the bunny, you could certainly use some masking fluid and mask out areas of him. Every time I start recording, they start going in the background. But yeah, you could use some masking fluid instead. So I think I'm going to speed up this process here just because it's gonna be pretty boring and I'm literally just wetting the paper.
Okay, so now that I'm done, what I do is just lift my paper, because especially if you're looking at a top-down view, it's really hard to see where you've wet and where it's still dry. We don't want puddles on our paper, but we do want our paper to be nice and shiny. So I find if you just lift it a little bit, you'll be able to see if any water starts running, that it's too wet, or if there's any puddles. And then you'll be able to see if there's any dry areas that you may have missed. Now, even though we're using a watercolor block, the paper will still warp a little bit, but once it's dry, it will dry completely flat. So we're gonna start going in with our phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna start placing this around our little bunny here. And since I took my time, you know, and really wet around him, this will be a little bit easier. Be the same if you use some masking fluid just to mask out his edges or whatever. And you can see how it's really bleeding out nicely since we did really wet the paper. So now I'm gonna take most of the water out of my brush and I want this to really fade out into a nice light blue, almost into nothing. So I'm just gonna take the edges of this and just start to helping it blend. And anywhere where I see there's excess paint, I'm just gonna get rid of that. Just tap it off onto my towel, or you could have a paper towel. Because I re really want some light transitions here. And we're just going to let that blend out and we're going to go in with our green and do the exact same thing and if the green and blue blend a little bit that's great that's fine that's just going to help So I'm gonna purposefully kind of push that green into the blue just to let it help it blend out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, tap off all the moisture off my brush and just really help this green blend out and fade out into nothing. anywhere I see some excess moisture I'm just getting rid of that okay and then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of deep sap green And I'm going to grab a little bit of that color we had mixed up and I'm going to put this under our little rabbit where our darkest shadows would be. And just let that color blend out as well. And again, I'm gonna get the moisture off my brush and 
just help these two colors blend together because I don't want this color to travel too much. So I'm sort of almost stopping it. I'm sort of giving it a, uh, you know, a point at where I'm saying, okay, that's far enough. <laughs> but it will still blend it nicely because they're both wet still. Then I'm gonna go in with a pretty thicker consistency and just go right under in a couple of spots here, like under, right under his feet, right under him where the shadows are really, really dark. There. So we'll leave our background to dry and then we'll come back and start our little bunny. Okay, so now that our background's dry, you can see we got that really nice transition where the colors just sort of bleed out together. So I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser and just do the same thing, just get any excess graphite off the top. But I don't want to get rid of all of the, the lines that I've put down because these are our guidelines of where the direction of the fur is going to go and where our shadows and stuff's going to go. Okay, so I can see a couple of main colors. So we're going to start by just mixing up some colors and I'm going to take this pipette and like I did with the wet and wet technique I'm just going to put some paint onto our palette first and then we'll go in and start working on our little bunny. So I'm going to mix up a gray color first so I'm going to take my neutral tint And I don't want this to be too dark at first. So I'm gonna go pretty light. And then I'm just gonna put a hint of that in here and mix up some sepia. And actually, I'm going to, that's a little dark already, so I'm gonna get rid of some of that and I'm just gonna mix it up again because I don't wanna go too dark at first. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit of sepia and then I'm gonna take a hint of the burnt sienna just to warm that up a little bit. And then I'm gonna go in and take some yellow ochre and get sort of this really light. And I might even put a little bit of new gamboge in there and just really get like this warmy yellow tone that I can see almost like a cream color. I'm really gonna try to lighten this color up. So I'm just getting some more water. Try to scoop all the color into one place. And I might make just a little bit more of my gray color because that's gonna be one of our main colors. And we'll start with that and we can always darken it up a little bit as we go. Then I'm gonna need sort of like a mauve color for the ear. So I'm gonna take 
just a dab of this. That was really just a dab. And I'm going to take some quinacridone rose. And I've got to be careful with these colors because they are quite punchy. And I'm going to take a hint of dioxazine purple to sort of make a mauve color. So something like that. That'll be for our ear. Okay. Now first I'm going to start with the eye. Um, actually let's lay in, let's lay in our pinks in the ear and then we'll do the eye and then we'll move on to the body and come back to his head afterwards. So I'm going to get some water on my brush. I'm just going to start laying some water in the little ear area here. And again, just like the background, we don't want puddles, but we want just a little layer. And I'm going to scoop up some of this color and just start laying that in and just letting it blend. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of pigment. And I'm just going to lay a little bit around the edges too because I can see this color kind of blends out a little bit. I just want a nice light hint of that pink around on the outside. Take a little bit more of that dioxazine purple. And I'm going to put this in where that little shadow area is. And just let those colors blend out. Okay. So in his eye, he's got a really nice blue highlight here. So I'm going to get that in now. And I'm going to use that phalo blue that we were using for the sky. So I'm going to grab that on my brush and just pop that in here. And I'm using the size 4 silver black velvet brush now, just because some of these areas are smaller there. Okay, now I'm going to switch to my size 8 Princeton Neptune brush. And I'm going to get some clean water. And I'm going to start going over the back of our little bunny here, but I'm going to avoid his head for now. So I'm sort of just making little fur like textures here where I don't want that water to go. And I'm just going to cover the rest of him with it. And this will just help our colors blend a little bit better into each other. And I'm going to be careful down by his feet. I don't want too, too much water right down on the feet. So I don't want the colors to blend too much down there because those are really light. And same with over here. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to start with that yellow ochre light color. And I'm going to start putting that in down on his feet. And I'm going to sort of get that color in anywhere that I see it. And because we're doing wet on wet, we need to work a little bit quickly. But if it starts drying on you too quick, you can always let it dry completely and then go on top again with another layer. Okay, so I'm gonna grab our gray now. And I'm just really looking at my reference photo, trying to see where those colors lay. I'm gonna take some of that brown color And because we put that wet pigment down first, you can really see how that's letting all of those colors bleed together. And I'm gonna go back in with that gray and just reinforce this in a couple of areas. Now I'm going to start to grab a little bit darker pigment with my brush and I'm going to start laying this in a little more concentrated.
And because it's a darker pigment, it's not going to move or blend as much. It's still going to blend a little bit and move around a little bit, but not quite as much as the more watery um, ones that we're putting down. And I'm going to do the same thing with that sepia and burnt sienna. Then I'm going to wash all the pigment off my brush and I'm just going to lightly blend these areas together. I still want to save some of our light areas, but okay. And we're going to start working on the head now. So I'm going to start with the back ear here. And again, I'm just going to wet everything in this area and I'm going to avoid this ear for right now and I'm going to go around the eye I'm going to sort of avoid this little area here too because that's pretty light. Okay, and I'm going to start with that gray color. And I'm pretty much going to put this color just about everywhere. That I've put the water. And I'm going to go in with that brown. And just start adding this in.
I'm just going to wet the ear just a tiny bit. And we're going to go in with a little bit of the gray down towards the bottom. And then I'm going to take the brown and use that up around the top of the ear. I'm going to go in with that darker mixture. And just tap in a bit of that here. And again, I'm drying my brush off. And then just kind of blending this area out a little bit. And I'm going to blend it out. I'm just going to do just a light wash right here just to cover that area. And I'm going to go back into the ear and just darken up this bottom spot. And again, I'm going to dry my brush off as best as I can. It's still damp, and then I'm just going to blend that out. Okay, so before we let our bunny dry, I'm just gonna go in and start working on his eye again. So down here's a little bit more of a darker blue than up here. So I'm gonna take that same phthalo blue that we used for the eye, but I'm gonna take a little bit of our neutral tint and work that in. So sort of like that. So it's a very nice dark blue. And we're gonna put that on the bottom part of the eye here. I'm 
and I'm gonna get most of that moisture out. And there's sort of like little eyelashes that I can see in our highlight. So I'm just gonna do a couple little flicks here. Just in that highlight like that. And we're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and do some details. Okay, so now that our little bunny's dry, we can sort of have some fun putting some details in. The first thing I'm gonna do is work a little bit more on the eye. I sort of tend to work on that as I'm going, as things are drying. But I'm gonna take this sepia and burnt sienna mixture that we were using. And I'm gonna use this for around the eye because he's got a little um, dark patch right around his eye. So I'm gonna get that in right now. And again, I'm using my size four round brush for this. So there's that. And I'm gonna take this gray mixture that we had. And depending how well this is gonna show up, we might need to add a little bit darker. But I'm just gonna go and just make just some little hair details here and there. We don't need to have every stroke of hair in, but we sort of want, you know, an, a hint of what's going on. So that's pretty much what I'm gonna do now. So I'm using my size four silver black velvet brush again. And I'm just gonna start making some little fur strokes, so I'm indicating some hair or fur on this ear here. And this is the fun part because you can put in as much or as little details as you want. basically just want to get the general direction of some of the the fur get our shadows in And you can also use a brush like um, these ones here. This is like a three quarter or a three eighth select Princeton brush, but it will sort of get you the same effect of getting some little tiny hairs in there when you just wanna show like a hint of some hairs. Now you gotta be careful because this one will do a lot of hairs at a time, but they might not look organic. So that's why I kind of like going in with just 
this little brush and just doing, you know, a few strokes here and there just to indicate some fur. But for his body, we can switch to this one and try, you know, to see how this one's going to look. Or you could use a bigger brush and just splay the bristles. I think I almost just like going in with the single brush a little bit better. I can just control more where I want the hairs to go. So I'm really trying to see where those really shadowed areas are to get those little fur strokes in. And I'm always looking in the direction that they're going And here I'm just crossing some of that hair outside of our little bunny as well, just to create a little bit of hair texture outside. Maybe for these bigger areas, I'll switch back to this bigger brush just to get a hint of that hair in there so you can see how I'm just getting the same effect.
And I don't want to cover up all the light areas that we had either. So I'm trying to be careful to leave some of those light areas. And as most of the paint is off of this, I'm sort of using it as like a little dry brush texture as well. And here where the hair is just so short, I'm almost just tapping it in. Just to create the hint of some texture going on. So I'm sort of just taking the, the dry paint and just dry brushing that on. Okay, I'm going to go in and do the same thing with just a little bit of this brown that we had mixed up. And just get just some hair little strokes in here. Might have to water it down a little bit. Just where I see some brown. Oh. A little puddle there, so I'm just going to scoop that up. Just gonna make a little more of this mixture, so I'm gonna grab the burnt sienna and the sepia. There we go. So it's sort of an in-between texture. little hairs on his paws here. I'm getting most of that pigment off and I'm just sort of doing just some little dry brushes here and there where I see 
this color a little bit. So now I'm going to go in with my lamp black on his eye and I'm getting it fairly concentrated and fairly dry and right here where there's a very dark, where his darkest area is, I'm going to go in concentrated with that. And I'm going to take this size round four brush again and go in with this darkest color brown here and just get a few little strands in his ear. Just a hint some hair around there and I feel like I definitely have more control with this brush over the other brush but if you're laying in large areas it's kind of nice to have the other brush I guess And I'm just taking this and creating just a couple darker hairs. Those are quite dark actually, so I'm gonna tap some of the pigment off. But I just wanna create just some little hairs like sticking out into the background. And I'm just sort of going along, just getting some texture in there. And I'm 
going to go in with that gray and sort of do the same thing. Just get any couple little extra hairs going anywhere I feel like it needs to darken up. Like this shadow under here needs to go just a touch darker. And just along here. Oops. And I don't know how many times I've ever dropped a paintbrush. <laughs> I'm surprised. Uh, that was a pretty clean drop. Not too much damage done. So I'm just trying to find those darkest shadows right now and just lay a couple little hairs in just to indicate that these are where some of our darkest shadows are. And then I'm just going to take the brush with a light pigment and sort of just do some dry brushing texture. I kind of like the look of this, but you do you. Okay. Now we need to get the look of some whiskers going on in here, so I'm just going to grab some light gray and I'm going to dab off any extra and I'm just going to start so I'm going to find where the little nose part is and I'm just going to do some little dabs here just across just to create where the whiskers are coming from And I'm going to create just a little bit of texture down here and some dabs. So I'm just seeing where the pigment is, just little tiny dabs on top of here to create some fur on the nose. And it's so, so light. I'm going to do the same over here and the hair is so short that you basically just have to do little little dabs and then I want to make sure it's pretty light so I'm even just going to go over and tap any access off and I'm going to bring a little bit of the gray here where our nose is. And it 
it's such a small area too. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come on top with some white gouache, do a couple little white hairs, do our whiskers, and then our little bunny hair will be done. Okay, so I've got a little bit of my Winsor & Newton uh, white gouache here and you can use whatever gouache you want for this, but I'm just going to add some highlights to our little bunny and we're going to add our whiskers in using this. And I've got a few different brushes here that I'm going to try. So I might start with this size 8 silver black round. Okay. And I'm just going to start putting in some of the white hair that I see. And I'm using a bigger brush here because I want some bigger clumps of hair, although these uh, silver black velvet brushes have like really nice tips on them so it's easier even if you're using a bigger brush to still get these nice little fine lines and i'm just trying to see where the the brightest parts on him are and I'm just putting a few strokes in here and there and again I'm not going all the same direction I'm slightly changing up the angle but in the general direction of where the the hairs are going so it's almost like a little tiny crisscrossing pattern but Now here we've got some white hair sticking out of his little chest, so I'm going to try to get those in. And because we've got our background in, these hairs are going to show up a little bit better.
and I'm going to go down to my smaller size 4 silver black velvet. And I'm going to get this pretty concentrated because I want some of these little white hairs to show up down here. So I'm just going to put some little hairs on his paw. There's a little light line between the brown and the blue of his eye, so I'm going to get that in. And there's a couple little white areas in there in the corner of his eye. And then I'm just going to get a couple little strokes here to break up this brown patch just to make it look like that there is hair that kind of overlaps it a little bit now i'm going to make some whiskers for him so you can do this with either a small brush that has a really nice point or you can use like a liner brush this is a Princeton Neptune one pretty sure this is a liner brush it doesn't say but uh, you can use you know whatever brush and you just want to use light pressure but you want to do a continuous smooth stroke at the same time so I'm just gonna start and just do little lines and I might end up turning my paper and if you want them a little more noticeable you can go over them You could also use like a gel pen for this or um, a Posca marker or something like that if you don't care about it being watercolor, like all of it in like a water soluble medium. Now there's these little tiny hairs. I'm going to get two. Now I hope these are showing up on camera for you because they are light.
And I'm going to do one little dot in the eye here just to create a really nice, some sun coming in. I find if you put a little white dot in the eyes of some animals, it gives them a little bit more liveliness to them because it shows a reflection in the eye of a living animal. And I'm just putting in a couple little extra strokes here and there where, where I see it needs it. So it needs to be a little, a little brighter down here on his chest area. Okay, so I like how that's turning out. I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm just gonna add a couple little blades of grass and we'll be done. Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple little blades of grass here and there. You don't have to add this part if you don't want to. It's totally up to you. But um, can you see the palette there? I am gonna take a little bit of sap green. I'm gonna take some of my deep sap green because I want this to be a dark enough color that it's going to stand out. And I'm also going to take a little bit of my uh, phalo green. Just to give it a little bit of variation, but it's a very dark green and it's just going to stand out a little bit from our background. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to make a little little patch here and I'm gonna press down and then lift my brush really quickly sort of like this to create a uh, leaf type look so I don't want it to be too thick I want it to be fairly thin but I'm just gonna press it down and kind of make a leaf go like that and then maybe we'll have one go this way and then maybe there's like a little one down here, maybe two or three, just like that. And then I'm going to take just another brush, get most of the water out. And I'm going to take the bottom part of this and just fade it out so that it's not such a, you know, a stark line there. But it kind of fades down into our background that we had. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. So maybe near this little paw here. So we'll have a little bit of grass here and then we'll do the same. So I'm going to have one come out this way maybe one like that and then maybe we'll have just a couple more little leaves there I'm going to take some water and I'm going to wash this out here just to let it blend out and just blend it right down into our background. Then maybe we'll have a couple, just a couple little ones here and maybe it can overlap our bunny a little bit. So we'll do one 
kind of like that and then maybe one coming from there and then we can have a couple little ones there. And I'm just doing it to the bottom edge because I want that top line to be there, but then I sort of want it to blend down. And then maybe we can just have a couple little leaves just coming in here. Maybe there's not really that much grass, just a couple little clumps. Something like that. And I'm gonna give them just a little bit more of a tip on them. There. So that's our little bunny for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, hit the notification bell so you know when I post. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.